Hi, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson, we will solve problems involving concentrations expressed in parts per million. So before we look at these two problems, there are a couple of things I want to go over. Um, first of all, when we talk about parts per million, uh, it, it is called parts per million because it involves a ratio of one to one million. So because of that, the unit at the top over here for the mass is always expressed in milligrams. So it has to be a very tiny unit, unit relative to the bottom part. So the bottom part is expressed in liters. So I know it doesn't look very intuitive, but to go from milligrams to liters, it is a million times smaller, or one is a million times bigger than the other. It might be more obvious when we look at the other equation that we'll have to work with, which is a mass over mass. So in this case, we would use this equation when we have a sample that is in a solid form, as you will see in a minute. So we're working with the sample, it's in a solid form, and part of it is also obviously in a solid form. So this mass would be expressed in milligrams, and the bottom part will be expressed in kilograms. So this one might be a little bit more uh, obvious. Milligrams into kilograms, there's a difference of one million in terms of size. Okay, so parts per million or PPM, that's what it means, right? Parts per million means that the ratio between the top and the bottom of your equation, so part of the sample versus the entire sample, well, the scale between the two is basically one million. All right, so let's look at the actual problems. The first one says, what is the concentration in parts per million of a solution that contains 0 0.02 grams of glucose dissolved in 100 ml of solution? So before I solve this, another thing I want to point out is that parts per million, um, as per the example here, would be used, for example, when we are measuring uh, a certain component in the blood, such as sugar, right? Glucose in the blood. When you go for a blood test, they, they do give you uh, various results, uh, how many red blood cells you have, how many white blood cells you have, your platelets and whatnot. Well, this is expressed in parts per million because the sample is not all that big, but uh, more importantly, the items found in the blood are in very small quantities. So parts per million is useful for that. Same thing uh, if we look at the second example very briefly, it talks about bacteria in the soil. Bacteria are very tiny, and therefore if you have a soil sample, it's gonna be relatively big as compared to the number of bacteria in it. So that would be an example, another example where we would, we would use parts per million as a scale or as a unit. Okay, so let's take a look at the first math example. Let's solve it together. So it says, what is the concentration in PPM, as we read before, of a solution that contains 0.02 grams of glucose dissolved in 100 ml of solution? So if, as usual, I list my info, I will have the mass of the solute, which is the glucose, right? So it's 0 0.020 grams. Now, I said that this mass has to be expressed in milligrams, so if we do times 1,000, we will obtain 20 milligrams. Next, we have the volume of the solution, which is 100 ml. As I said moments ago, this volume has to be expressed in liters. So if we divide this by 1,000, we get 0 0.100 liters. And don't forget, when I do a conversion, I keep all my zeros. I don't change the number of digits that I have. Okay, I just move basically my decimal point. And I am looking for the concentration. So if I replace in my equation, I will have 20 milligrams over 0 0.100 liter, and this will give me 200 parts per million. Now, if I do my significant figures, this is too large a number in terms of digits. 
My smallest number has only two digits, my shortest one, two digits. So I can only keep two. Now I can't drop a zero because then my answer would become 20. It would not be 200 anymore. So I have to convert this into scientific notation in order to follow the sig fig rules. So I get 2.00 times 10 to the 2 ppm. Now I still haven't addressed the significant figures. So I can only keep two. So I'm going to keep this digit and this zero and this one gets dropped. So my real final answer is 2.0 times 10 to the 2 ppm. All right, so that's for the first example. Moving on to the second one. So the concentration of bacteria in a soil sample following a rainstorm is 12 ppm. So in this case, they are giving me the concentration right away, 12.2 ppm. If the sample weighs, so the sample is the entire mixture. So it's not M1. M1 is just a solute. It's just a portion of the sample. M2 is the entire sample. So M2 is 8.6 grams. Now we know that this has to be expressed in kilograms in order to keep the ratio between the top and the bottom in the right scale. So scale 1 to a million, basically. So this, in kilograms, if I divide by 1,000, I'm going to get 0 0.0086 kilograms. And I'm looking for the amount of bacteria, so the amount of solute in the entire sample. So if I replace, I'm, gonna, I'm going to get 12.2 ppm is equal to M1 over 0 0.0086 six kilograms. So this gives me a mass of 0 0.1049 milligrams. Now, if I do my significant figures, my shortest number is this one with two digits. So I will be cutting right over here, dropping these two digits. The first one that I'm dropping is a 4. Now remember, this is not a domino effect. The 9 doesn't turn the 4 into a 5, which, which would turn this into a 1. That's not the way it works. I just pay attention to the first digit that got dropped. It's a 4, so it's below 5, obviously. It will not change this digit over here. So my final answer will be 0 0.10 milligrams of bacteria in this sample. So as usual, if you have questions, reach out. Otherwise, I will see you for your next lesson. And until then, take care.